God, this is so emotional. Such an emotional roller coaster. But as always, I am never disappointed at the end of the ride. Whatever the mission is, I it's always listen to the outside that fucking car is doing wheelies or something. It perfect sound effect for John. Yeah. Okay, uh, I just told Nina that, uh, well, if you saw the last, when you watched the video previous to this one, you saw that um, it was revealed that Lena was never exposed to any of the tainted uh, energies that supposedly were, we were facing, you know, demonic energies that we were exorcising. All of those demonic supposed contacts from the other side who had been in covens and so on and so forth, those energies are long gone. They are all in dark holes and being fucking uh, detoxified. Literally, this is what is happening right now in the outer realms. We are detoxifying the entire universal atmosphere. It's like the, the equivalent to an atomic bomb blast uh, negating all of that dark energy and what that dark energy is is fear it's our own fear okay um we're taking this part piece by piece but many of the um eastern philosophy will, will understand uh this whole concept better like the tibetans and uh but i'm doing this for lena and for our teachings here in the West, <laughs> the West, well, North, West, East. Well, listen, here's the story. But the bottom line is, it was John all along doing impressions of those energies. So in other words, Uncle Bruce was John imitating Uncle Bruce. It was never the actual warlock negative demonic energy that is uncle bruce mm -hmm. we'll talk about that in a moment all right because you were at his deathbed yes i was at uncle bruce's deathbed years ago before i realized that he was a demonic force i only just realized uncle bruce is a demonic force yeah um john also imitated ina john also imitated julia John also did an imitation of, uh, briefly, Aunt Nancy. John also did an imitation of Auntie Mimi, of his father, Freddy. All of those people were demonic uh, witchcraft practitioners, right? Both of our families were. Mm -hmm. John imitated my Dante Hani. <laughs> the list goes on and on because I've had many lessons and many, um, I've experienced many exorcisms with John where he um, spoke to me as those people, but it was never those actual energies because God will never make us face a demon. Uh, demons are a figment of the bot mentalities warped imagination okay john is this to say demons become more real the more energy they are given and that energy is all fear-based if you fear a demon you will become a slave to that demon uh lena and i don't know a demon between us, right? Mm -hmm. Our only demons have been in our own self-destructive tendencies, but there were never demons after us. They were just our own minds torturing ourselves with our own minds. Mm -hmm. And this is free will. Right. Oh, God. See, this gets me confused. Well, you wanted to talk about Adam and Eve. Are we even ready to talk about any of this? The fact that you question that is good. Because maybe we need to think it out a little bit more before we get into it. But I'm glad that you brought it up because Adam and Eve is a completely fabricated story. Not the fact that they existed 
Because Lena and I are Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. We were that first couple. Mm -hmm. We were the children of the Garden of Eden. And we were happy there for a very long time. Until we decided to come down here. God gave us the free will to explore further into the universe. And come down here. With the option to always return home whenever we felt like. Mm -hmm. We could come down here in our favorite form, which was that form you see there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we that's what earthlings were designed to look like. That's the way we looked always when mother and father created us. Mm -hmm. There was no serpent. There was no serpent. No. The serpent is a fairy tale. The serpent enticing the children to eat the fruit is a fairy tale. The woman seducing the man with the fruit is a fairy tale. What happened was when man began to write, use paper or walls or material, hieroglyphics, to interpret things to one another. Everything started getting lost in translation. Telepathy used to be the only mode of communication. That was the first mode of communication. Language was not necessary. So when did language become necessary? We always had vocal cords. And it was a singing that we had. A high or hard to explain. Ah, 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 ah. Music really was our mode of communication, aside from innate understanding of each other's feelings and thoughts, much the way we communicate now, Lena, when we're not making videos and using your vocal cords. But writing became something that man was very possessive of, a way of owning thoughts and transferring their thoughts onto other humans in a rather forceful and aggressive way. The written word can be beautiful. It can bring one to tears. Lyrics, they hold a magic to them. They can be referred to again and again. And they have been an invaluable tool. But sadly, they have done so much damage because of the misinterpretation and the aggressive way that some writers have chosen to abuse this gift, this tool, this intelligent way of moving the language around. So language, the way we know it now, is partially to blame for the complete bastardization 
of the history of man and woman, or mankind and humankind, or God and mother. In fact, it's completely a mess. The written Bible is a mess. And the stories have been so twisted and bastardized that it should be destroyed. And that's an important message that needs to go out there. There's just so many inaccuracies that we need to start again, but using a more pristine mode of interpretation. And it's going to have to be telepathy. We remember our history, you and I, Lena. God and Mother help us to remember it, and we remember it well as it comes back to us. But we're going to have to relay these things as best we can. Like a new slate. We can't even really refer to too much of the old shit anymore. Because it just doesn't jive. And it's true. It's right down to Adam and Eve. Those things never happened. There was no tempting and putting clothes on. And people liked clothes. We always liked to wear clothes. We liked to not wear clothes. It's, it's foolishness to... God created a world where they could have whatever we want. So yes, we were born naked. But we were also born with the adoption, with the, with the option to adorn ourselves in however way we liked, without it being sinful or without it being strange. Everything became mutilated by the language and by certain impulses brought about by the abuse of imagination. But why would they start if, okay, well, free will. Mm -hmm. And when people started exercising free will, which was a gift from God, they began to think that they were God and that they could do it better. And that's where the trouble came in. And that's what devil worshippers are. They're going to create something that's stronger than God. They created Satan. That's where things, that's where it's completely backwards and fucked up and will never work. God created us, perfect children of God, the beautiful love and light of mother and father. Satan worshippers, they created him. They're fucking puny, stupid, nasty. They use their free will to damage and hurt. And that's their God? That's bound to fail. Is this coming around now? Yes. Satan is a, a creation of Satanists. And we are creations of God. Bingo. I love you. I love you too.